Here are Navy Fed line by line business membership application instructions. Don't go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Soda Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous. If you are as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee, or tea, or vodka, and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to give you line-by-line -line instructions on how to fill out a business, a Navy Fed business membership application. You can see here on the screen here, this is uh, the link to the, the business membership at Navy Fed. And so there are a series of conditions. If you want, you, first you need to become a business member. If you want to get a business loan or a business credit card, uh, the Navy Fed Go Biz card, you need to be a business member. And uh, so what are the benefits of membership? So you have service excellence, you have access to small business professionals, you can focus on veteran owned businesses. This is from Navy Fed standpoint. You have the backing of Navy Fed credit union which is a prestigious institution and you have 24 7 account servicing you also have access to business specific solutions so you have tailored insurance options competitive credit offerings you have low fees and competitive dividends and you have easy payments and payroll processing so you, you have it there you have the plethora of benefits that should encourage you to join and you should be joining today now you should be joining now and i'm going to show you how to do it you need to follow three simple steps to become a business member you want to be sure to complete all of step two before calling navy fed so there is no delay in processing your request so step number one you want to make sure all owners are individual members of navy fed credit union with accounts in good standing step number two you want to complete all of the following before proceeding to step number three so you, you there is a special signing link that you can use to access the business membership pre-application form you can sign with your personal navy fed credentials you need to complete all fields in the member in the business membership pre-application you want to compile all appropriate documentation for your business type and have everything ready to reference before you proceed to step number three i will show you all the uh, all the appropriate documentation you need okay Step number three, you want to call Navy Fed at 1877-418-1462, 1877-418-1462 within the next two business days after completing all the steps to requirements for a review of your pre-application and to submit all required documents. And reps are available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. So just be mindful that the process could take up to an hour. Okay, this is important. And uh, let me just answer a few other questions before I move on. A deposit of $250 for sole proprietorships and $255 for all separate legal entities such as ALCs and corporations is required at the time of opening. And uh, business solutions, Navy Fed business solutions requires certain business government, uh, business governance documents, the operational rules for your business. The documents required and what goes in them will vary based on the structure of your business and any applicable state and local requirements. So you want to consult with business counselors, attorneys, and accountants so that you know exactly what you need, right? So I was talking to you earlier about the appropriate documentation. So on the screen, do you see where it says, be sure to complete all of step two before calling us so there is no delay in processing your request? This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm going to talk to you about now. So what are the documents? And the documents vary by business type. If you are a sole proprietorship, you need your federal tax ID number letter, your EIN letter. You need to have a valid business license, business permits, or fictitious name certificate or certificate of assumed name. If you are a general partnership, you need to have your EIN letter, beneficial owner form, and a valid business license, business permit, or fictitious name, certificate, or a certificate of assumed name. If you are a limited partnership, this applies to limited partnerships, LPs, limited liability partnerships, ALPs, 
and Professional Limited Liability Partnerships, PALP. You need to have a good standing certificate, an EIN letter, a beneficial owner form, and a fictitious name certificate. For corporations, and this applies to S Corps and C Corps, you want to have a good standing certificate, and uh, the certificate must be filed stamped within 60 days before the date of application. You need to have an EIN letter, a beneficial owner form, and a fictitious name certificate. If you are an LLC, you want to have a good standing certificate, federal tax ID number, this is again the EIN letter, you want to have a beneficial owner form, and a fictitious name certificate. And other important information, you need to understand that a beneficial owner is any individual who directly or indirectly owns 25% or more of a business entity and one individual with significant responsibility for controlling or managing the entity. And this, this kind of information is important because maybe Fed wants to know who to go after, whom to go after if there is a problem with the, with the loan or the credit card or there's an unpaid balance, all that kind of stuff. It's all about risk mitigation. Okay, and um, legal entity businesses complete and sign the, certifi the certification regarding beneficial owners of legal entity customers. And this is important because they're part of the application submission package. All right, and uh, all types of uh, business entities except sole proprietorships must provide, must provi uh, provide beneficial owner information because a sole proprietorship is not a an incorporated business right so it's not really important here and uh, a good standing certificate this is also known as certificate of existence or certificate of authorization is the state issue document that shows that the entity is appropriately registered with the state and is in good standing the secretary of state of the state in which your business was formed is most often where copies of your good standing certificates can be obtained okay so those are things you need to uh know now now let's just dive right into the uh, the paper form here so you can see on the screen here the navy fed business membership application you can uh, download the form at uh, the link that we're putting on the screen here so you can see on the first screen you have business membership eligibility okay and how you need to establish a business membership. You can visit a local branch or you can you can uh, do it manually or you can do it online in some cases. Again, for more information, call the number I gave you earlier, 1-877-418-1462. That number is important. And uh, so here, one thing that's very important to understand is that for uh, business membership eligibility, all owners of the business must have an existing individual membership with Navy Fed. And uh, Navy Fed requires a minimum of 250 to establish a new business membership. So the money and the membership. And uh, you also need to make sure that Navy Fed, I mean, to make sure you understand that Navy Fed may refuse membership due to any language, symbol, name, or DBA that could be construed as profane, obscene, or vulgar sexually explicit or offensive to any race, ethnic origin, nationality, gender or gender identity, religion, sexual orientation or disability. In other words, just just play, just do something just legit, okay? You want to shy away from all those sort of controversial industries, all that kind of stuff. On the next screen, you can see the required business entity documentation. So you, you here you have, uh, you have to, provide a, a lot of stuff like from uh, business permits and licenses to financial statements to uh, other information that is uh, needed to process your your uh, application Navy Fed recognize that various US states counties and local uh, municipalities may have variations specific to the titles of specific business entity documentation so if you just want to provide what you believe is uh, what, what you believe uh, represent your business regardless of, of, of uh, where you live okay please ensure all signatures are provided and appropriate documentation is included with your application navy fed pays attention to the signatures make sure all the authorized signers are existing navy fed members okay this is really important 
and the business owners are automatically included as authorized signers. Only the business owners are allowed to add or remove signers from business accounts. Now here is a form. Remember that in this form, if you go to the link that I gave you earlier, you can actually uh, you can actually clear the form if you if you have made a mistake, you want to start over, you can do this. Okay. So the business information, the first spot. Here you put the legal name of the business and the business tax ID number. This is the EIN. So this is basically the number, the nine digit number you received from the IRS. And the DBA, if you're making, if you are doing business under a different name, for example, if your business is the uh, sweetie, if your legal business name is uh, the awesome sweetie kiwi show, and you were doing business under, let's say, uh, Papa John's pizza deliveries, you want to put your DBAs there. You want to put your business phone number. If there's another number, you put that there. Business phone number is very important because they're going to use this for verification purposes. So use the right number. And you want to put the physical address of the business. So you put the street, the city, the state, and the zip. The mailing address of the business, if it's, if it's, it's uh, different from the above address. So in some cases, some business like to have uh, a postal uh, appeal box for their address. You also want to list all additional locations of the business. So this, you can actually, if the form, if this section is too little, you can actually attach, let's say, a page where you explain all the locations where your business is located. You put the email address. This is important for online access. You put the uh, website and the date the business was established. And you want to put uh, the ownership affiliation if you, if anything uh, applies here military affiliation or you are affiliated through biology through a, a parent of a relative or other next they want to have now the form of business form of business is basically you want to they're asking you based on the form of business what kind of documentation you need to provide there may be additional documentation though but so you can see if you are a sole proprietorship if you're a general partnership, if you're a limited partnership, if you're a corporation, corporation here, we're, we're speaking about S Corp and C Corp, okay? And if you're an LLC. So these are the information that uh, they need from you. Next, we're, we're talking about business details. So what kind of spe specifically, what kind of business do you have? And you have to just include that here. If, if other, you want to check other and you want to put on those three lines, Underneath other, you want to put what exactly your business does. And you also want to describe the nature of your business. Okay. They want to know more about what you do and your current or estimated annual sales slash revenue. This is gross, not net income here. This is gross sales. And uh, your business's primary trade area. Are you international? Are you statewide? Are you domestic? Are you a local community? You put that there. And uh, if you have other accounts with, uh, with an institution other than business, other, other than Navy Fed, you want to include that. And you want to also talk about the type of transactions for which your Navy Fed account will be used. They, want, they just want to have a, a clear idea of what you will be using the business, the business account for. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another session of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. I'm still walking you through step by step the Navy Fed Business Membership Application. And now I want to talk a little bit about your business products and services. Okay. And uh, so here we have, uh, you can see here, you need to indicate the accounts you are interested in establishing. You can, you can have up to four or five, doesn't matter. If you just want to have a savings account, a business savings account, a basic check in, a premium check in, money market accounts is totally up to you at a minimum we recommend that you open two so you open a membership savings account and a basic a basic checking account all right now if you have a, a premium checking accounts then you have unlimited signers but if you go with a basic checking uh, accounts you only have a owner and one sign allowed one signer allowed okay they also have plus checking which has unlimited signers so this is really good all right. And one thing I want to say is that a business membership savings account is required for all limited partnerships 
LLCs and corporations. This is why earlier I was telling you that you want to have at least two accounts, a membership savings account or a savings account for that matter, and a checking account. Now they they are next they want to ask you they want to show you the funding requirements for new business memberships. So I spoke to you earlier about the 250 and 255, right? So if you are a sole proprietorship, you need to put 250. If you are anything else, 255. So you have to describe how you're going to fund the account, whether through cash or check, debit or credit card, or internal account transfer. Because all the members of the business, as we've said throughout the show, must be existing Navy Fed individual members. So next you put the uh, owner one, owner two, owner three. You put their first name, last name, their access number. Access number just means their account number. Okay, the percentage of ownership, uh, the issue business debit card, th their title. Okay, so if you want the Navy, Navy Fed to issue a business debit card to them, you say yes, if not, no problem. Owner two, same thing for owner three. So this is just now if you have more owners that you want to add to the account, then you have to attach that information on a separate sheet and, at, and have it alongside this form when you file everything. Next, so we have owner four, you complete the same information. And now we're talking about the entity owner. Okay, the the uh, if this is if you have another company that owns the company for which you are opening the account. Okay, before we were speaking about individuals. Now we're speaking about corporations or other entities, okay, a legal entity. So if you have companies that own the company for which the account is being opened, then uh, you want to put the entity name. You can see here they're not asking for the uh, the entity is a social. They're asking for the EIN, which makes sense. You need to indicate also the percentage of ownership. This is important also, right? And uh, the entity, as as well as the individuals, must be existing Navy Fed members. So in this case, they're asking they're asking for access number. This is the account number. So same thing for entity one and entity two. Moving on, we have here the authorized signer. Okay, so in addition to the business owners, the following named persons are authorized on behalf of the business to execute any documents received required by Navy Fed to transact business, including to sign or endorse any order for the payment or withdrawal of funds from the above named applicants' business accounts. Remember that an authorized signer is not, however, authorized to apply for credit. When it comes to credit, Navy Fed really wants to have the owner, the owners of the business. Okay, so only business owners are entitled to add and or delete authorized signers. So here we have authorized signer one and authorized signer two. Just want to put the, the, the authorized signer information. You can see here that Navy Fed is not asking for an access number. In other words, the authorized signer does not have to be a current Navy Fed member, but it is I would say uh, it is recommended. It is recommended. Okay, so you can see here they put you put the first name, last name. You indicate whether you want Navy Fed to issue a business debit card to the person. You put uh, you you indicate whether the person the signer is an is a current member. You put uh, some uh, identifiable information about the the, the person, the U.S. driver's license, expiration, whether the person is U.S. citizen or not, date of birth, home phone number, phone number, social security number. In some cases, no, in this case, it's mandatory. Yeah. And the address, the zip, the states, all that kind of stuff. And you do the same thing for authorized signer number two. If there is a if there is a third authorized signer, you do the same thing for that person. And then you have to uh, just read the authorization to link business and owner consumer accounts. This is important because uh, then um, Navy Fed wants to have a, a bird's eye view of your financial situation as a whole. So not only at the personal level, but also at the business level. So here they just want you to be able to, uh, they're asking for your authorization to link those two accounts. So if you wish to, uh, and this is on the next uh, screenshot, if you wish to opt out of linking your individual account to the above named business account, you wanna please complete the fields below. So you can, you can opt out of it. 
but we recommend that you opt in because this has uh, it has advantages it has benefits not only from a budgetary position but also from an account management perspective and next you have the disclosure and agreement so this is stuff you just have to read i mean some people don't like i mean most people don't read don't read this but uh just gotta read it maybe on a saturday afternoon when you have nothing to do just read this next this is a continuation of uh the disclosures Next, here we have again the disclosure agre and agreement continued. You have to keep reading this. And basically what you have to do, once, you, once you're done, you have to sign. So all the owners have to sign. So you have owner one signature, owner two, owner three, owner four. And again, if you have more than four owners, you have to actually uh, attach an, ex an additional sheet to the application form. So for each owner who is signing, he or she must print the name and uh, put the date of signature okay and if there is a um, an entity owner again an entity owner is just a, another company that owns the company for which you are opening the business membership you are applying for business membership so if you put the name of uh, the entity owner number one you put the title of the person you put uh, the person who is representing the entity owner number one do the same thing for number two you print the name do not write the name you need to print the name and you, and you date it and uh, you put the title of uh, the entity owner representative and moving on here next slide you do the same thing for the for entity owner number three if there is one and then you have to put you also have to make the authorized signers sign so if you have up to three authorized signers you need to have them sign and date the form and uh, so you have to put the business entities company name here and then you sign so you put uh, this day of uh, the year 2021 2022 2023 and that's it and then you have to put the signature of the secretary managing director or other authorized officer of the company and you sign it and you put the access number again the access number is the account number and that's it all right folks this is it for today's conversation. I was actually working you through the Navy Fed business membership application line by line instructions. And uh, I spoke, I gave you an overview of the Navy Fed business solutions. I talked to you about the paper form and the recap. Now for this membership application, it's just better to do it uh, at a branch because what's going to happen anyway, even if you do it online, part of it, they're going to contact you for more information and you might need to dedicate at least one hour to go through the application with the Navy Fed rep, business rep, and they will ask additional questions and uh, that's it. All right. Thank you so much for your attention. God bless you. God bless your business. God bless you. Uh, God bless all your uh, operations. And I hope that uh, you found this video valuable. I will speak to you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.